Hey YouTube, it's Demetri, and today we're going to talk about publications, academia, and the validity of academia, all wrapped into one big nutshell here. Um, I wasn't sure how to structure and break this down, so let me just start off with um, the piece here as there's a post. So uh, Valerie Monacoen, I believe that's how you pronounce it, um, is a little bit controversial on LinkedIn, which I like. I appreciate Even when I don't agree, I like the, the little bit of the sparring and kind of sparking of conversations in the quant community here. Uh, he posted a post recently on, you know, friendly reminder, beware of celebrity quants. I'm like, yeah, oh, this may be me. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, when it comes to quants, it's not about papers. And it sure as hell isn't about SSR and articles, a dumping ground for half-baked models, fantasy back tests, and unreadable math flexing. SSRN was never a credible outlet. It's where good ideas go to die and bad ones pretend to be smart. So when you see another quant publishing their alpha generating framework or novel risk metric, pinch yourself. Jim Simmons never published a single paper on quant trading or risk. He did, however, publish actual math. Real breakthroughs, no hype, no charts with four colors and zero meaning. Real quants don't need to publish performance fantasies. They just make money with a, with a, a bag of money here. Uh, so at first I read this and I'm like, you know, this is stupid. I don't agree with this at all. Um, because as many of you know, I publish on SSRN. I have zero affiliation with any journals. I have zero intention to publish on a journal. If a journal came out to me and said, Dimitri, we saw this paper on SSRN. It looks great. Can we put it in our journal? I would consider it. Sure, you can put it in your journal. But the reality is I don't really care about academia and I don't think academia is functional anymore, which is going to be part of this discussion here. But then I reread his post a second time and I looked at it and I was like, no, I completely agree with him. Um, so I at least agree with parts of this, right? So he's mentioning, you know, stop publishing alpha generating frameworks or novel risk metrics. Novel risk metrics might hit me with the kurtosis paper, to be honest with you guys. Um, I will talk about that here in a second. But yes, alpha generating frameworks and things. There is so much BS in the finance world. Um, most papers that are alpha generating focused and all this nonsense, they're not mathematical scientific tools. So they're not going through this scientific approach. It's more like I threw mud at the wall. I tried some sort of hand wavy exercise here and I made money on it. So therefore it's valid. And it's like, no, it's not valid. And that's what he's kind of hitting at the bottom. You know, they just make money because if your idea was valid, you would go and use it and make money and make a profit on it. So I agree, the finance journals, the finance community, um, especially SSR, and there's a lot of garbage on there because there's no peer review. So I agree with that. I think that is stellar here. Um, I'll leave on, on, on the comments below if you guys wanna dig into this because I'm going back and forth with a few people. Um, I put on here, unfortunately, the academic journal and the industry journals have also lost credibility. So what I mean by this, one, uh, let me just point out the obvious here because somebody commented back like, oh, it's a valid process and it's pure hell to get through the process. Yeah, that's that's the problem with it. It's inefficient and it's not valid. So let me explain this. Uh, one, so say I submit a paper, let's say it's groundbreaking. It's the Black-Scholes model. It will be rejected. It will not be uh, published in a top journal. Bottom journal, sure. Top journal, no, it will not. Why? I am not an academic. I work in the industry. Any academic that goes into the industry, you now lose credibility. If you don't believe me, go look at famous quants out in the industry that have worked in academia for extended periods, went to the industry and now can't publish. You'll always notice they have a co-author and the co-author is always an academic who is a purist, right? They are the, you know, oh, I'm high and mighty with my tenure track and I only care about publications and higher education uh, because you have to team up with people to be able to publish because the academic system is broken. They're too dumb to assess the fact of whether you're a real academic, if you have real valid ideas, um, they have to do some sort of filtering. Now, I get it. I understand this process because you go, well, we can't accept every paper that gets submitted. Just add a dollar amount to there. Like it's $100 to submit a paper. If you're really concerned and you know you want to help filter out, you know, I don't know, the high school kids, the undergrads that are just mass producing and, you know, shoving and chucking papers into these, into these journals here. But the point being with that is that academia, some sort of extra hurdle, which is fine, would be valid if you had peer reviewers that knew what they were peer reviewing. They do not. Um, pure academics, those that are purists, often cannot assess things from an industry practitioner's perspective. And what I mean by this, there'll be lots of times like some sort of financial 
metric or methodology is produced and it's a guaranteed process of alpha generation or some investing strategy or some sort of proof, but they always miss key basic frictions in the marketplace, like transactional costs, um, issues with like market microstructure and how the dynamics actually work, and then legalese with like flagging trades and other sorts of intricacies that impact your validity. And then they say, oh, markets are 100% efficient. Uh, there's this new method. And it's like, well, how are you going to assess that as an academic if you don't work in the industry? Like you don't have that sort of valid piece there. So unfortunately, peer review, I think is the, the best thing going on, right? Somebody pointed out like, well, if you don't do peer review, what do you do? Throw out the baby with the bathwater? Well, why would I waste my time going through the peer review process to have somebody who's not qualified peer review my paper and then tell me I can't publish a paper because I'm not an actual academic, right? It doesn't make any sense. Um, if anything, you're gatekeeping and keeping out good insights and information on that. So that's part of this process. Then I'm going to get into, I'm going to call white papers. You go into like industry journals. Industry journals are complete trash. Um, I'm going to say it again. It's the same issue with peer review. It's the same issue with white papers and journals. It's the same issue with self-publishing and SSRN. There really is no credible filter anymore. It's starting just to deteriorate across the field. Uh, we're starting to get academics that publish in academic journals. Kudos. A lot of them are big names. There's a lot of trash and garbage in the journal of finance, for example. Uh, it's, it's just nonsense. But when you get into industry ones, I can tell you from firsthand experience, um, one, if you pay money, often they'll just publish you. Um, two, the peer reviews, again, are not valid. I get a ton of peer review requests from journals saying, Dimitri, you work in the credit space. Can you, for example, you know, peer review this paper on credit derivatives? I don't work in credit derivatives. I work in retail credit. Like I'm not, I'm not qualified to assess this paper. Um, or it will be in like business, like the business side, the corporate side of credit. I don't work in corporate side of credit. I work in retail credit. Again, they want me to peer review these and to sign off on them so it looks valid. I'm not going to give you my name, my branding. I'm not gonna waste my time peer reviewing a paper because I am not valid to peer review those papers, right? I'm happy to peer review if there was some sort of monetary gain for this. Like I need something to comp me for my time. Um, also, I'd have to be an expert on that area and field and have to be able to actually peer review it. Just having a bunch of practitioners sign off and say, yeah, this looks, this looks kind of valid. That's not enough proof, guys. You need to actually do the work of a peer review process here. So this is why peer reviewing has lost, in my opinion, all credibility, at least in the finance and the economics um, side of the business. Medical seems to have similar issues. Again, I don't not specialize in the medicine side, but it seems like there's a lot of hoaxy, hand wavy medical papers and publications done. There's a lot of politics and grants and how money's transferred. That's impacting what papers are being published. If you start to think about that, right? Why are we doing peer review, right? So what I'm really telling you guys here is not that peer review sucks, academia sucks, and we should all just, you know, do whatever. I think what we need to do is fix the academic peer review process here. One, you need to actually review work. I don't care who the person is. I don't care if they're an academic, an industry practitioner. I don't care if they're 20 years old, if they're 90 years old. None of this should matter. It should be based solely on the academic merits, um, the rigorous scientific proof that is being proposed in this sort of paper here. So that is a big part of that. Now, somebody else asked me, Dimitri, like, what do you mean on deteriorating, you know, credibility here? Like I've never seen that. The public, you know, they they view this peer review process as great. I mean, how many people in the public are reading peer reviewed journals? And no one. I know one that I know of. I mean, I know, I know, I know friends. I know health nuts. They will go out and find these health articles, but often they find a health article that just kind of aligns with what they want here. So that's another issue with that. Now we need to improve the academic community. Oh, this is a whole other rabbit hole to go down. But the academic community needs to get restructured, fixed, and processed. It is very, very corrupt on the inside. I have friends that work in academia that are stellar, you know, gold, platinum quality candidates of like, you know, very high ethics, very high morals, trying to do the best possible. And then you have the other swing of this of mass corruption, grants, money, um, being paid to generate research. Um, and they're just biasing the results. Like, I get it. We need to finance and you know, research. I understand that. I, I sit in that boat often of trying to find someone to finance the research I'm doing. Um, but at the same time of that, like we need to somehow figure out how do we get this to be an actual peer review process, um, not just a lazy kind of hand wavy process with that. So that is that. Now that leads me to my paper. Um, 
my paper has 1,200 downloads. I believe when I pulled up on SSRN, I think it's like the math, applied math and stats and something else is a generalized topic. My paper is the 10th most downloaded paper since 1997. So this should, like, this is mind blowing, right? And we're going to look at this from a few different points. One, you have downloads and two, you have citations. Okay. Paper's so new, just came out, there's zero citations. That's fine. Um, but we need to consider both these as kind of quality metrics here. One, complete downloads. The entire purpose of publishing a paper is to have some sort of new idea that is shared that impacts the industry, whether it's the academic industry, the actual finance industry, the economics. It should have some sort of impact on humanity and that this new information is brought to light that is going to make some sort of difference, whether it's safer financial modeling, whether it's more cohesion in how we manage risk and look at our you know, different angles and protecting investors and the public and corporations. Um, going into sciences, for example, like advancing the field of mathematics or chemistry or health or whatever, right? There are going to be different pieces that need to be brought together. But at the end of the day, we should be able to get the best ideas. And peer review's goal was to kind of find the best gold nuggets, bring them to the top, and then be like, hey, this is what we're doing. These are the great ideas that we need to be reviewing and reading and challenging here and educating the public. I can tell you from looking at academic journals, my papers that I just published based on my marketing ability crushes the majority of academic papers. And your papers, which could be 10 times better than my paper, are not going to see the daylight because the system's busted. It doesn't work. The second portion of this is going to be citations, right? This is something that we do see that's a little harder to rig. It's harder to game. Um, and it's going to be how many citations your paper has. I do think we should review research as citations, right? We don't have time to read every paper out there. Um, often a quick way to review if it's a feasible paper is looking at citations. Now, citations can also be misleading because somebody can be pointing out that your research is wrong and have a citation to your paper, and that generates more and more citations with this. But in general, right, the purpose of publishing is sharing ideas, challenging ideas, right? I wrote my paper and people go, oh, are you like sold on it? I'm pretty confident, but I publish it because I want people to challenge it. I want to say like, oh, I made a massive logical error or my my method doesn't work at all. Or maybe there's a tweak to it. There's a second paper coming out. Uh, one of my colleagues is working on and it's more or less like it's not agreeing with my paper. It's saying it's not necessarily right, but there's a different way to look at it that is actually more correct than how you looked at it. Now we need this challenge. We need this community. We need to bring this together here. So I am hoping uh, to be doing some paper reviews in the future, nothing, nothing short term, but I'd like to spend some time, help boost some better quality papers. Again, I'm not going to have my own journal. I don't want time doing this, um, but it's just trying to bring to light things that are more quality that are going to help at least the community I'm in, which is the quantitative finance community and how we kind of boost and bring those papers to light and get more challenge and interaction and work. And I will put a final note on this. The finance community in itself is way too secretive. Everything's a secret sauce. People are doing very, very simple things and like, oh, I have a secret sauce. It's like, no, you're, you're, you're doing linear regression. Um, this is not a secret sauce. Um, you're doing other simple things too. But at the end of the day, I'm hoping we get more sharing. Um, I would encourage you guys too, if you're going to be reading re peer reviewed processes, maybe share those papers, share the papers that you think are valid, help bring the best papers to light here, because clearly the peer review process is not working. Now, if you're in the academic community, I would encourage you guys to stop the nonsense. Um, don't look at their credentials. I don't care if you're an academic. I don't care how many papers you've published. Um, I've seen great ideas not published for really stupid reasons. Again, and the process needs to be quick, concise, and productive. I have a colleague who's spent years trying to get a paper through a journal because, you know, these academics are just too busy to do the actual peer review process here. Um, I don't know how to fix this. Perhaps there needs to be more investment in it. Perhaps there needs to be better people in academia. Uh, tenure track is beneficial because you can speak your mind, but often I think it becomes lazy because you're not churning a dollar trying to prevent being fired. Uh, there are pros and cons of that. But the academic community, I would encourage you guys to make better research. Stop publishing just to hit your quotas. Um, or if you do, you know, maybe just market and brand and publish and really get moving forward the best papers you have and not highlighting a lot of the nonsensical ones that you know are nonsense, but you're just publishing to hit some sort of quota to keep your job or to hit tenure uh, from your tenure track position here. So anyways, those are my thoughts. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.